Hello again. Uh, I'd like to continue discussing phaser and uh, you know JavaScript in general and using like a, a complicated library to to do things. <clears throat> in this case, we're going to try and you know add some features to our game. You know, currently the game, you know, it looks like this. I've got the home screen here. It's got these particles um, behind the logo, which is kind of fun. Um, but I thought these particles are really cool, but it would be nice if, let's say, we could use them here in the game, right? So, you know, imagine like when we pick up this star, there's a little poof of particles, right, to show that we collected some points, right? Or maybe when the player gets hit by the bomb, there's like an explosion of some kind, right? So, uh, so what are we going to do? Um, first, let's talk about like how to figure this out. So we already saw that you can go to the documentation and you can go to the labs and you can see the example code. Um, and the example code, I'll, I'll totally admit, it's not easy to, to work through. So, you know, like you kind of have to think about it. You have to look, you have to, you know, try some things, um, you know, and, 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 and you got to fail a few times too along the way. Like I, I didn't just figure this out, you know, just the first time, you know, it took a couple tries every, every time I wanted to learn something new. So what did I do? Um, the first place I started was the phaser three labs. So I'm going to just search up phaser three labs. Um, and these are all the examples, right? And they're kind of organized and you kind of have to know their naming convention, right? Or like their, you know, the verbiage they use to describe everything. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm still not sure what stuff is. Like, I'm not exactly sure what an action is. Animation, maybe I get audio. I kind of understand bugs, these problems you could run into or something else. I don't know, right? Camera is probably, you know, camera thing. Yeah, I'm not sure we have to go explore that one, right? Depth sorting makes a lot of sense. Like what's in front of what? Right, and we can go through this events or maybe things that happen in the program. Game config, right? We already use that, so that kind of makes sense. We could look in here for some options on that. Game objects is kind of a big one. So this is probably like a lot of things. We don't know everything that's in here, but essentially game objects are all the things we see on the screen, and this includes the particles, and this is where we found the particles before, right? So, you know, when I looked through here, I found container and DOM and graphics and group and image, and we kind of used group already, and we used images. Um, here's the, uh, the particle emitter right so I'm gonna look in here at particle emitter and the example I used um, earlier was this one create emitter right so when I load this up you know I got this this one actually looks cooler than mine I think because they have a better picture for their little spark guy maybe I can work on that anyway um, and then if I go to edit down here I can see their sample code right and sometimes I have to translate the sample code into what I'm working on right this is written sort of as a as a couple functions with a, an object literal with preload and create, and we were using a class to do that. So, you know, um, so anyway, uh, let's go back a little bit here, and um, and this is not easy to navigate. I find like whenever you get to here, you can't use the back button, but you have to click this arrow, right? Though when you're in the code sample, you can use the back button. So anyway. Um, Another thing that I saw here was this create emitter from config. And the thing that I need to know is, um, well, that's a, that's a really great particle system, right? Um, yeah, that was super cool. Um, anyway, uh, I, I really like this. This looks super cool, but I want to use it, right? And they have this create emitter from config. And what I think they're doing is they're passing in an object here and they are setting all the properties on the particles, right? And the particles must have a lot of properties because they can look a lot of different ways. So essentially, like the particle system is, let me go back here, right? The particle system is um, a group of many images. Like there's hundreds of little pictures here. It's hard to see, but like when you see a little circular one like that or like this, right? Though That's the image for the particle. Right, and the reason they look kind of amorphous and liquid here is because there's a whole bunch of them all stacked up, okay, and then they're using a color mode to blend them together, right, and so they kind of blend together, but but these are like essentially the particles, right, so there's hundreds of them on the screen right now, there are different colors, 
They can be different sizes. They can move in different directions. And there's a whole bunch of other qualities to the particle, right? And I kind of know that particles work this way. So what we need to do is we need to figure out like what properties we can use, right? And when I look at the create particle from config, they've given me these um, properties here. Let me see if I can... I guess I can't, I guess that's okay to read there, right? I just want to make this big enough to where you guys can read it. Um, so they've given me a, a frame property, right? They've given me the X and the Y property. This is probably the center point where the particles emit from. They've given me a speed. So this is like how fast the particles move. Lifespan, this is probably how long the particles live. And then the blend mode is... Um, how the particles are drawn on top of other particles, right? Let me see if I can run the code here. I think it'll run in this sample thing here, right? There we go, right? So there's our particle system. You know, that's kind of off to the center. Why don't we um, change this to uh, like 200 and make this like uh, 150 on the Y. Oh, wait, actually, I didn't want to do that. Um, I want to run the code here. Oh yeah, there we go, right? So we, we use the X and Y to move the particles. Um, here's the speed. What if I made the speed like 100? Oh, so now they move a lot slower, right? Um, lifespan is 3,000. What if I change that to 300 so they, the particles wouldn't live as long? So the particles, like you can see, they're kind of disappearing down here at the edges. So it probably takes them about three seconds to move out to here, and then their time is up. The 3,000 probably rep represents milliseconds, right? So every 1,000 is one second. Let's see, what, what if I set it to 300? Oh, so they go 300 milliseconds. That's like a third of a second, and then they disappear. So that could be interesting. What if we, what if we make it like 1,100? Huh, kind of crazy, huh? So anyway, so there's a lot of properties here. We can kind of play around with these things. Maybe 2,000, right? See what they look like, right? Um, and we can see what they look like. They look pretty cool. Um, but, but there's probably a lot of other properties. How do we figure out what those properties are? Okay, so the, the, the code samples are cool because they show us like how to implement something, but they don't give us all the information. We need to go to the... Um, to the, to the uh, the docs, right? So I'm going to go to phaser three um, docs. And so I, I need to figure out, um, you know, where the options for the particles are. What I want to really know is I want to know what I can put in the config. Okay. So what can I put in the config here? Okay. So these are particles we did this dot add this in essentially is a game scene so game scene add particles is where we're starting and that creates i guess a particle object and then particle object has create emitter method that takes an object as you know as, as a configuration object right so it takes that to set the parameters on the on the emitter right so let's see if we can figure that out so i'm going to go to phaser three docs I'm going to go into the phaser API. I'm going to, I know this is under game objects, but I kind of looked here earlier, <clears throat> or it was under game objects in the, um, the, 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 the lab stuff, the sample code, but I couldn't find emitter in here or particles, right? So that wasn't helping me. So what I did is I went to scene. And then I used add because remember we were here and we did, you know, essentially this is a, a scene and then we're going to say add particles, right? So I'm going to try and follow it through that way. So I'm going to go to add. Um, I'm going to scroll through here and see if I can find particles. Actually, I'll just find it on the page here. This is what I did earlier. Um, oh, yeah, there we go, right? So, so here's particles and then it takes a texture frame and emitters okay so if i look over here what did they do they did um, particles and they just included the texture which was called flare so they must have imported this up here right okay so i think we're on to the same thing they didn't include the last two parameters but these are in the square brackets so it means they're optional so now how do we um how do we uh 
get to the emitter. So I want to find the methods of this particle thing. It doesn't really say what it returns here, but I'm going to go to type right here. It says phaser, game objects, particles, particle emitter manager. So let's click on this. Oh yeah, here we go. So particle emitter manager. And what I want to find is create, um, I think that's what it said right here, uh, create emitter. I'm hoping like we're in the object right here that is the particle thing, right? So a particle emitter manager or whatever you call it, right? So let's see if we can find create emitter. Oh, here we are, right? So here's create emitter and it says creates a new particle emitter object, adds it to this emitter manager and returns a reference to it. Okay, great. And it takes a config. So that's really what we're looking for. I want to find out like what properties are available to me so I can make like small particles that, you know, just emit once, poof, right? Like an explosion or something, right? So um, so there's a bunch of stuff here. Config. Oh, look, there's a config, particle emitter config, configuration settings for particle emitter to create. So I'll click on this and here's a long list of properties that we can config with. Okay, so this is really great. So now we're kind of on it. I'm gonna play around with the particles here for a minute just to see if I can use some of these properties. So we've got active, right? Um, what if I say, you know, what if I put that in here? I say, you know, wait, active uh, is false, right? So I'll, I'll launch the code again. Hey, no particles, right? So if I say active, is true I can run the code and my particles run so so you know boolean <clears throat> optional <clears throat> so optional we don't have to include it you know it sets whether the the emitter is active or not I guess it's kind of nice if there's a more description here that's okay blend mode oh so we can use blend modes here so far we're using the add mode I wonder what other modes there are right so this is in phaser blend modes right and it's a string but if I click on blend modes, what do we got here? Um, hmm. This one I'm not sure about. Let's see. Um, I was hoping just for a list of the blend modes. Well, we'll come back to that one maybe. Callback scope, maybe that doesn't affect us, right? Collide bottom, so should the particles collide with the bottom of the screen, the left of the screen, the right of the screen? So that maybe is what that does, depth callback, depth callback scope, emit callback scope. Some of these like just sound kind of technical. Maybe you use them in very specific situations, right? Um, oh, frequency, right? So this is kind of interesting, like how often are the particles emitted, right? Let's, let's copy that one and give that a try. I, I just want to, I'm going to get rid of this active. So it seemed like it was active all, you know, if you don't set that. So let's set the frequency to... Uh, 100 and see what it does oh so now the particles come out less frequently right what if I set frequency to like 1000 right oh now I can see the particles like one at a time essentially right so that's kind of interesting right what if I set the frequency to 10 right so that'll make the particles come out more frequently Right. What if we make it uh, so this controls like how, you know, how often particles are created, right? Like the frequency. Right. So so that's pretty good. Um, so we could create something interesting with this. Um, what do we got here? We got gravity X, gravity Y. Let's just try gravity X. I don't know that this sample has, you know, physics and other stuff set up for it, but let's do gravity Y of 300. So right now the particles are kind of going off you know, equally in all directions. So I'm assuming if the gravity is on, they should start kind of all falling down. Oh yeah. So now I've got particles that look like streams of water or something like where the gravity's pulling them down. So anyway, um, this is kind of how I would try and figure something out is I, you know, I'd look at the sample code. Hopefully I find something close to what I want to do. And then I would read the code, try and figure out what, code they're offering me and then 
look for options and parameters and settings and things in the documentation and see if I can trace that down here. Okay, so in the next um, video, maybe we'll we'll play with this a little bit and then we'll try and incorporate it into the actual game. And what I really want to do is I want to try and um, you know make particles appear like when you grab a star, have a little poof of of stars or something, right? Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that is is helpful.